Bird Light. Gateway 2000. And by McDonald's. When you buy a computer factory direct from Gateway 2000, our tech experts are there for you around the clock. What keeps them going? When I fix their problems, guys that I don't even know will just come out and say, I love you, Gretchen. I'm married. At least I know I still got it. Gateway computers feature the Intel Pentium processor. And the only way to get them is to call 1-800-GATEWAY. You've got a friend in the business. Give us a call. Today, yeah, yeah. Thank you. We'd also like to thank Northwest Airlines. They've taken us all around the world. Tonight, they're taking us home. We're all coming together, heading for the home ground, sharing all the feelings everyone's family. Under one roof. Northwest Airlines can take you as far away and bring you as close to home as any airline on earth. Coming up on Penn's Oil at the Half, I'm Pat O'Brien. We'll have all the tournament news, and Coach K and Coach R will break down the first half of the game. That's after a message and a word from your local station. Stay with us. With the Vortec engine in a Chevy S-Series, you can go around the world four times before you have to stop for a tune-up. trip Chevy trucks like a rock it was the most perfect game that we played ever the whole team was in a zone that was the start of my career it's just like a fairy tale they'll never forget their road to glory you're on CBS a big change. Kuppenheimer is evolving with more designer suits, more brand name shirts, more neckties, more choice of the choice stuff, all 30 to 50 percent less than department stores. Kuppenheimer, join the evolution. They test car batteries here. They test pickup trucks here. And when they test yard machines, they go here. Dave Spivey's house. <laughs> MTD tractors, chipper shredders, lawn mowers, and edgers tackle the toughest jobs. Look for MTD yard machines at retailers near you. MTD. Wow! I like it! MTD yard machines, American made, American owned. Right here! Right now! Zero down! Get a zero down lease on the new Plymouth Voyager with easy out roller seats and dual airbag. Or get a 96 Voyager with up to $1,300 in package values. The Plymouth Voyager lease with zero down or up to $1,300 in package values. Right here, right now, zero down. Only at your Chrysler and Plymouth dealer. Here's the big change. Kuppenheimer is evolving with more designer suits, more brand name shirts, more neckties, more choice of the choice stuff, all 30 to 50% less than department stores. Kuppenheimer, join the evolution. Yes, Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. Saturday afternoon, college basketball here on CBS. I'm Pat O'Brien. Welcome to Pennzoil at the Half with Coach K and Coach R. Georgetown trails UMass 38 to 34. A familiar situation for Georgetown. Well, Pat, Georgetown's been a, a behind and a half in every game thus far in the tournament. They really struggle early on to find quality shots, but they got in a comfortable offensive rhythm late in the, in the half and went five for nine to close the half. All right, and the Georgetown, of course, didn't trail in the first game, but if you're watching this game from the stands out there, you're yelling, defense, defense for both teams, right? Both teams, Pat. I think early on, UMass's half-court defense was terrific, and that's how they got into the lead. And then 
Georgetown's half-court defense turned it on, and UMass had a hard time scoring. So let's see who can do the best job in the second half. And when you talk about UMass, you talk about defense, and you talk about team defense, capital T there. Absolutely. And if we look over here in the Telestrator, let, let's take a look. And here's Iverson. He's going to come off and watch Camby help him out. Help out. Now, as Iverson brings the ball around, they take away his penetration. He has to pass off to Nichols. Now, watch how quickly Padilla comes over. Then Bright comes over. This is great team half-court defense, Pat. All right, uh, and so we have a 38-34 game right now at the half. Well, the first time since 1987 that an ACC team will not be in the Final Four. Kentucky beats Wake Forest by 20 today, 83-63. to Kentucky's pressure D to a Wake turnover finished off a pass from Walker to Allen Edwards for the score. Watch this. And Kentucky just putting on a clinic this afternoon. Dave Odom looks on and says, Ahem. Then Anthony Epps flips it over to Derek Anderson, who buries the three as Kentucky delivers uh, tries to deliver a knockout punch now. And then they got Tim Duncan involved in Wake. But they got him involved too late. Uh, they, they had a tough time solving the double team by Kentucky. And was Tony Delk involved or what, Mike? He was huge. This is one of two big shots that the senior hit to lead his team to the fi Final Four. Kentucky just wouldn't let up, and it's the first Final Four since 1993 for the Wildcats. And what a feeling that is to cut down the nets there in front of your friends and family. And afterwards, we spoke with Rick Pitino. You know, at halftime, I thought we, we played one of the better games of the season. And our guys were docile, somber. And I said, guys, you just played the best half of basketball. Yes, it wasn't acrobatic. You didn't have all these incredible dunks. But you put on a clinic defensively, and you're not sky high. I said, they're making you play semi their style. You just held a great basketball team to under 20 points. And then suddenly they, they, they realized what they were accomplishing, and they were remarkable on defense in the first half. We had to withstand a tough playing with a lead against a good team. We will see you in the Final Four. Congratulations. Do you have any tickets? <laughs> <laughs> we don't, but guess who does? Rick Pitino. <laughs> Kentucky on that one, 83 to 63. Last night, a couple of wild games out in the West. First, they had that Syracuse-Georgia game, and then late it was Arizona and Kansas. Kansas prevails 83 to 80. Jock Vaughn with 35.9 seconds left to the game. Gets the ball over on the left side to Jared Haas, who nails the three. And Kansas didn't look back, 83 to 80. Now, earlier in the game, a scary moment for Kansas and Gerard Haas. He goes up, and he drops down on that right shooting elbow, re-aggravating an injury. And just a short time ago, we spoke to Roy Williams and asked him how his injury is. He's had a bad elbow for a lot of, a long time this season, but he just aggravated and fell on it last night. He's had quite a bit of swelling, maybe more swelling this time than he has recently, but uh, I think he'll be all right. He's played with it for quite a while. He's shooting better now than he was before he hurt it, so it's fine with me if it stays hurt. Hey Roy, this is George Raveling. The resulting conversation after your win over Arizona is centered around Hass and Vaughn. Talk to us a little bit about your outstanding freshman, Paul Pierce, who had 20 points in that game. Well, really, the two guys that really did the most damage was Paul Pierce and B.J. Williams. But uh, Paul, I think, was four for six from a three-point line and uh, got involved early with the offense, and, and that was big for us. And then B.J. was really big off the bench with 18 points and nine rebounds. Roy, this is Mike Krzyzewski. I know tomorrow you're, you're going to be facing a big zone of, of Syracuse's. Have you faced many, uh, many zones like the one you'll, you think you'll face tomorrow? No, Mike, and that concerns me. We haven't played that much against zone this year, and, and I don't know of anybody that we've faced that has that size that Syracuse has and that plays it as a base defense. We've played against it for a few possessions, but not like Syracuse does, and, and that is something that concerns us. We've got to get the ball inside and not be content just to shoot the three-point shot. Coach, how's everybody holding up in the altitude up there in Denver, Colorado? <laughs> I think we're doing fine. I tell them that it's no difference that I jog in the mornings and I can live through it, so they should be able to play through it. Are you tired? Well, I'm tired, but I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you have a present for Mr. Raveling here. Well, I tell you what, they were telling me something about George's bad habits, so I've got some peanuts. I don't understand <laughs> what they're talking about, but I've got some peanuts for you, big George. <laughs> Go ahead. Thanks, Roy. Thanks for stopping right, Thanks, guys. Good luck. Thank we'll you. be watching. <laughs> Problem with that, Mike, is he's eating a salary. <laughs> Thank you for watching Penzo at the half. Gus Johnson and Quinn Buckner will be back in the second half. Georgetown, UMass after this. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. We'll see you later. Pennzoil at the half was sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings.
During development, the Aurora's V8 engine raced the equivalent distance of 31 Indy 500s back to back. It also broke 47 speed endurance records, two of which had been set by Mercedes. And along the way, it hit a top speed of 3,500 miles per hour. My mistake, that was the Air Force's Aurora. Our version has never been clocked above Mach 3. It's your money. The game of basketball requires hard work. But you have to work even harder to succeed in life. Life is no game. Make smart decisions. Don't use drugs. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. When I first started officiating, um, the thing that uh, surprised me the most at the college level was the intensity of the players, the coaches, and, and the fans. I was tremendously overwhelmed with the intensity level of the whole atmosphere. How hard the kids played, how hard the coaches worked, and how excited the fans got over the whole experience. I think the, the toughest thing about officiating in relation to the kids is that as officials, um, we find ourselves getting older every year. The kids, they're always between 18 and 22 years old, and in order to get yourself mentally and physically ready to keep up with them, you've really got to work at it. Some of the things that happen in college basketball, some of the plays that the uh, young men make are so great. Sometimes you stand under the basket and you witness this play, and you just want to drop the whistle out of your mouth and, and stand there and applaud like everybody else. They're, they're tremendous athletes, and they do some marvelous things. This message provided by the NCAA. In 1984, I won my first green jacket, and last year, just days before the tournament, I lost my friend and mentor, Harvey Penick. I could hear Harvey say, take dead aim, and that's just what I was doing on my favorite course and in my favorite tournament. Ben Grimshaw has won the Masters for a second time. I was overwhelmed by the opportunity to win for Harvey. A tradition unlike any other, the Masters on CBS Sports. Allen Iverson going right at UMass in the first half. He had 17 points. And Georgetown at halftime trailing 38 to 34 to UMass as the Minutemen they walk out of the locker room and get ready for the second period. We'll return to Atlanta after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. In searching for a luxury performance sedan, Michael Young tested the Oldsmobile LSS against three of the fastest Japan has to offer. The Infiniti J30, Lexus ES300, and Teppanyaki chef Yasu Norimoto. And while his 240 horsepower LSS was no match for Yasu's speed, not only did Mr. Young fare much better against the imports, he had them for lunch. Will the LSS pass your test? You're on CBS. I was with my daughter at the opera, and before the first aria, I realized I'd lost my keys. Happily, my Lexus dealer was able to have my spare key delivered to Will Call by the time the fat lady sang, if you will. Lexus, the number one car line in customer satisfaction, an unprecedented five years in a row. And see Lexus and many Lexus, always a step beyond. I can't believe you did it just for me. Nothing is too special for you, my darling. I don't know what to say. Oh, Winston. It's so beautiful, beautiful. It's incredible. I can't believe you did it just for me. <laughs> Do you think the French will miss having it? Nah. They've got lots of other great stuff. Win Powerball when you could have anything you want. George's Powerball. Think big. Think really big.
CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Nissan. Miller Lite. 1-800-COLLECT. And by Celtic Pride. Head to the second half, UMass leading by four. Now let's go to Andrea Joyce for a report. All right, guys, John Calipari's message to his team about this game has been very simple all along. Make it hard for them. And now with Iverson heating up, they really want the players to work hard at wearing him down. They also feel like they need to do a better job handling the Georgetown pressure. And they got to get the ball inside to Camby more to get him more involved in the offense. Back to you guys. And thank you very much, Andrea. UMass when leading at halftime they are 24 and 0 but keep in mind the last two tournament games for Georgetown they trailed at halftime by three points and went on to win trail by four now tipped up and in by Marcus Camby came to start out the second half yeah, Georgetown came out and they acted as though they were in a 2-3 zone and then they attacked the man with the basketball and you could see that UMass was waiting for that play Runner by Victor Page, way off the mark, and we'll have a jump ball. Possession arrow in the favor of the Hoyas. Gus Johnson and Quinn Buckner with you, and your feelings on the first half of play. Well, I thought that uh, UMass got a lot of support from uh, Dingle, and I thought Bright was very good for them. They were able to keep uh, Iverson taking some difficult shots, and when you do that, it takes Georgetown out of their flow because they're not sure where he's going to take shots from. Hook shot rejected by Marcus Camby. Here's Iverson, got a great look, still can't get it to fall. The rejection is called a hand. He gave him a hand all over that ball. And that was not a half block, that was a whole block. Third block for Marcus Camby at 116 on the year. We talked about that he can make plays on the other end for you because it looked like Orfella was into his rhythm, could knock that one down, and Camby was just there, put it where it needed, where he felt it needed to go. Here's Camby. So he comes gets you on the other end. He had 10 shots in the first half and only made three of those. But you can see, as Andrew said, coming out in the second half, they're going to put the ball in his hands and let him make plays. Iverson went up with it, changed his shot. No foul call. Here's Harrington. And this time, it's a tie-up, and UMass will get it back. They're letting them play. They're letting the young players make the plays that need to be played. They're not calling tic-tac fouls. You would think that would bode well for Georgetown, but it seems as you watch Edgar Padilla get his hand on the ball, that it hadn't bowled not necessarily well for Georgetown, but definitely I think that that whole energy that Padilla brings and UMass has, it's bolted much better for the Minutemen. Travier so can be on the baseline and he's starting to heat up here in the second half. Marcus Camby, three for three, UMass on a 6-0 run. They now lead by 10. But they've been able to get him the ball where he can be more effective before the defense can get back and you can get two people on it on the baseline, stepped out a little bit. Here's Iverson. Got the step. Taken off. 2-0 move. That's a three-pointer. See, Dingle and Bright have been chasing all of those, those plays down. Here's Bright. Great move. Oh, down the tail. Push the ball up before the defense get back. You know that Georgetown wants to pressure you. If you get it down to the far end before the pressure ever gets there, then they really can't put a, a whole lot of pressure on you, and that's what... UMass has been doing. Padilla pushes it up. Dante is starting to go in. He gets there. He sees there's help. He waits to come down, knocks it off the glass. Right there, nice little spin move. Up and under, Owl falls in, then Jahidi White comes over, but they could give it to Owl because of the ball fake that got him out of position. Again, Dante Bright, Dana Dingle have been super here, I think, in this game. Dante Bright now has 10 points. He's got four rebounds, a block. Dana Dingle has five points. Uh, these guys, I, I like it. I mean, I like to see somebody else step up. When you're in a game like this, you need some help. UMass on an 8-0 run to start the second half of play. They now lead it. 46-34 with Dante Bright trying to complete the three-point play. 
He's a perfect four of four from the free throw line on the season. On the game, rather. Marcus Camby goes to the bench. Knowing that he put forth a lot of efforts, John Calipari takes him out of the game. They can do it because Tyrone Weeks can play because Jahidi White's in the game and has not been a factor yet. Here's Iverson, baseline cutter, leaves it for White. And Jahidi White picks up the foul inside. I, I think in order for Georgetown to get themselves back in this game and potentially get any kind of control, Allen Iverson has to become more of a passer. They are playing him to take shots, and he's now being taken some difficult shots. He's got to go draw the defense and find his teammates. Johnny White at the line, shooting two. Allen Iverson this season has had two 40-point games, one against Miami and also another in the preseason in IT against Arizona. And Jahide White knocking down the first free throw, shoots 47% from the free throw line. Big fella has really improved as the season's gone on. Done very well. You're speaking of Allen Iverson in this score, and he's got 88 points here in just the three games he's played so far. So he can get numbers on the board. But his numbers, the way he tries to go get them now is taking some of his teammates out of him. That's where I think he's got to his team. Javier saw off the front of the rim. Here's William pushing it up the floor. And this is what UMass wants Georgetown to do, and that's play the half-court offense. They feel very comfortable with the Hoyas slowing the ball down. Because that's because UMass plays great defense. And they're, they're willing to take their chance that they can play better defense than you can play offense, and they have proven that they are a very sound mm -hmm. defensive team. Mm -hmm. Off shot there by Iverson, and Marcus Camby returns to the ball game. 7-13 to play in the second half. UMass leading Georgetown 47-35. The East Regional Final in Atlanta, Georgia. UMass beating Arkansas. And Georgetown taking care of Texas Tech. The winner to face Kentucky. Here's Camby, jump stop high off the glass. <laughs> Give it to your center, let him break the press, and then knock a little jump shot off the glass. 17 for Camby. 49-35. Here's Page trying to slide in, rejected by Bright and recovered by Camby. Can't say it enough. Quietly, Dante Bright has been huge. Here's Padilla. Padilla being hounded by Drew Moore. There's Camby, 12 on the shot clock. Camby sliding in. Soft one won't fall. Rebounded by Harrington. And after that big night of fella Harrington, quiet. Only one rebound. Well, I think that's one of the things that Alan Harrison has got to help him do is get him involved in the game. And that's the other way to get some offensive rebounds and try to get something going for yourself there. Harrington, one rebound and only two points, but he'll go to the line here. Well, Allen Iverson has the ball, and he takes the, the little shot right here. You see Othello Harrington give a little shove and get away with it, but you see Marcus can be out of position and tries to keep that shot from being put up by Othello Harrington, but fouls it. So Othello Harrington step into the free throw line. Came in as the high school player of the year out of Murrah High School in Jackson, Mississippi. Played with Ronnie Henderson. Also, Jesse Pate from Arkansas going to Murrah High School. Some feel that he hasn't lived up to some expectations, but if you talk to Coach Thompson, that's not the case at all. Othello has done the things that Coach Thompson wants him to do on the basketball court, and that's going to really translate at the next level. I think because he had to have some character to do it. When you bring a freshman in to take away a team that had ostensibly been that of Othello Harrington, then he doesn't say anything, and he stands up and does what he's supposed to do. He deserves credit.